are you? You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words, and yet I'm one of the lucky ones. She's one of the lucky ones, folks. Here's an idea. Stop child abuse. Stop shipping children from Europe to the U.S. to talk about things that they don't understand. What say you? Do you see what's happened here? We've found ourselves in another episode of That is Censored! And that is a hole in the ground. Let's talk about the ionosphere. There's the current state of affairs. It's the last six hours. It's actually looking pretty normal. There's the latest image. We hope. At 1045 UT. And things are looking pretty steady as she goes. We had a request for a water vapor map. And there's your convergence zone over Oklahoma. Let's zoom way in. Nice. Here ends your weather non-pornography section. And the part where Google transcribes the speech and shadow bans us. Are you freaking out about climate change? Are you freaking out about sea ice extent being the lowest it's been? The second lowest of all time, tied for the second lowest of all time at sea ice extent? Well, SciTech Daily's got an article about it. Let's read a quote. Here's a part of the article where it claims that fires actually make the planet warmer by reducing the albedo effect because soot rains down on snowy areas and makes so much. Oh, yeah. Anyway, links to the article below the video if you want to lose an IQ point. Read the article and please understand how the word extent is used. This is just the two-dimensional coverage of the ice with no reference to the ice volume. Let's look at some more interesting scenarios about the beginning of fall as ice begins to grow again. If you're from the southern hemisphere, let us know if you're just coming out of a very, very cold winter and having a late spring, as we've had two years in a row here in the northern hemisphere. Here's the actual ice volume, and you can see it's beginning to grow again, beginning to build more ice there. And I've got a taskbar in front of my face. Let me get rid of that. There you go. There's the full graphic sea ice thickness and volume. I'll zoom way in on the graph there. You can clearly see. Ice is back to growing again, folks. Let's look at some more actual data and some, some actual alarmism. Ha, stay tuned. Oh my gosh, Greenland is melting. Folks, Greenland is melting. Look, there's only one inch of snow there. If you go over here, look at that. Zero inches of snow, folks. Zero inches of snow. Greenland is melting. Let's look at the rest of the island. Let's go a little east. And, okay, I, I think that maybe this part's doing okay. Uh, there seems to be more than five meters of snow there. Um, let's, uh, let, I've heard it's going to melt and sea levels are going to rise. Meanwhile, the Obamas buy oceanfront property in, in, uh, in what, is, what, what was it, R Rhode Island, I think it was? Was that near Taylor Swift's place? Please leave a comment. Uh, that five meters of snow there. Um, geez, does, isn't, isn't Iceland in the Gulf Stream? Isn't it the first day of fall in Iceland? Um, it, what, what does that say? Nine feet of snow? Um, oh, more than five meters of snow on a large portion of Iceland as well. Hmm. Please leave a comment if you're worried about global warming. Let's talk child abuse. Greta Thunberg is ferried across the ocean to complain about your carbon emissions. Let's play another clip of this child abuse session where this kid who doesn't know anything about atmospheric physics is exploited and essentially having her life ruined 
in a very real way about a very fake problem. Take it away, Greta. People are suffering. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. I don't know where these people are dying because it's so warm or where entire ecosystems are, are collapsing because it's so warm. Certainly not being caused by carbon dioxide. Let's let her continue here as she recites a bunch of talking points written by essentially eco-terrorists who would like to tax you for your carbon emissions. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction and all you can talk about is the money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. Anyway, there's an economic downturn going on right now. I've got an idea. Don't listen to people who don't know anything about what they're talking about. As those people will say things like, I shouldn't be up here. I should be back in school on the other side of the ocean. Agree. Yet you all come to us for hope. How dare you? You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. Let that sink in. Let's reflect on that. Let's reflect on this article about how is the theory on Earth's climate the last 15 million years wrong? And we're looking at coccoliths here. And uh, actually, I guess they're coccoliths. And you notice the different size of the older ones versus the newer edition. <laughs> they've, they've shrunk. And uh, yeah, this, this all has to do with the imaginary role of carbon. Let me read a quote. Like most science... Apparently, the findings of their study, if substantiated, raise more questions than they answer. Now, if you've ever studied any kind of a branch of science very in-depth, you'll notice that the more answers you get, the more questions you get. You get like an exponential number of questions based on the number of answers. And often, things are discovered without even intentionally doing so. If the cooling is not due to enhanced Himalayan rock weathering, then what processes have been overlooked? <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, no. I see the word collusion. Oh, no. It's collision. Okay, never mind. Anyway, it's all about carbon dioxide, and it all has to do with computer models of where could the carbon, where did it go? Where did the carbon go? Where did it come from? Oh, my goodness. It must be the carbon. It must be the carbon. Let's talk about how the Fed has started quantitative easing. That's right. The Federal Reserve is going to be increasing the amount of inflation inflicted upon those carrying on transactions with the U.S. dollar. Yes, that's right. We're hoping it doesn't turn into a sovereign debt crisis or a dollar crisis. However, the markets are not listening to what Fed economists are saying and bracing for recession, despite the fact that the Fed is attempting to hold the line and suggesting that the market is in great shape. Anyway, without getting into a deep, dark analysis of what's going on with it, just read the article, and please prepare accordingly. If you have a 401k that's totally overvalued, realize that there are a ton of junky zombie companies in there like Google, Facebook, Twitter, and Apple, and those stocks are all junk, and those companies are all zombies. Yes, I know they have billions of cash on hand, and nothing scarier than a zombie with billions of dollars of cash on hand. But they've been investing in their own stock, inflating a massive bubble. Don't be inside the bubble when the air comes out. Did you know that spiders fly using electricity and not using air? Yes, that's right. Voltage potential differences in the atmosphere. Since the atmosphere is a semiconductor, spiders exploit this by floating away. And this has been tested in a laboratory. And uh, we covered an article a few months ago about how they, they have sensors that are able to uh, detect electrical potential differences. Well, apparently, the electricity itself is able to fling them into the air, actually. And again, it's, it has been tested in the lab. Another interesting article linked below the video. And let's talk of, about a video here from See the Pattern talking about the evolution of galaxies and the way plasmoid theory figures into things. Let's play a clip toward the end, and I'm going to have to migrate for this one. It is a highly recommended video 
Please watch. Here's a clip. A pulsar out of the pulse beams of the active galactic nuclei. And then how using Bostick's work, these pulses could be grouped to form a larger plasmoid, which would lead to the formation of a new quasar, which... Now you can see the way he's illustrating this Z field can be the explanation for things like companion galaxies. Super interesting stuff. Real cosmology in coming at you. Forms a galaxy over time. There are still some big remaining questions for me on this. And of course, we've been saying for ages that galaxies, planets, stars, and indeed clouds above your head form on ionization pathways. And that is part of the reason why this is such an interesting video, as there are some quality theories about the way these things form out there. Here's another clip. Don't ban us, YouTube. We talk about cosmology on the daily. Cosmoid formation. Now, there is an important distinction that I must point out between what I've suggested and Eric's quasar model. Eric assumes that quasars are indeed very distant, very large, and very energetic. We won't say anything more, as that's probably so a pretty good teaser. He uses so, his model. watch the video. Again, that's linked below as well. Thanks, Smash Team, for tuning in. We did have a very interesting conversation with Mr. The, the One and Only, Eugene Bagashov, last night. And we're looking to have him on the show soon. We're going to be talking some pretty serious cosmology stuff. And uh, stay tuned for zero bonus segments as we are out of here. Thanks for tuning in again. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy the content on YouTube. Please attempt to understand the distinction between censored and sinkhole. Bye-bye.